secrets are here. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who with the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns. One God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he's established peace in the earth, justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you into righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. 
We'll read, I'll read, let's read Psalm 29 in unison. Ascribe to the Lord your thoughts. Ascribe to the Lord your the voice of the Lord is Lord. the Lord is and Mount Hermon like a water. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the voice of the Lord makes you open and strip the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are praying, glory. The Lord sits in throne of above the heaven. The Lord sits in throne as king. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people blessing and peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does right what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee with John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus answered him, Let this be for so for now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. 
And a voice from the heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I might have shared with you before. I go to a gym regularly, and when I first started, I thought being in the locker room would be an interesting experience, given the conversation and all the stereotypes that you kind of think of locker rooms and gyms, and particularly the men's locker room. And I have to say, going there for many years, or a number of years, is that it's been totally wrong. Uh, conversation is generally without any kind of foul language. It's not salacious or whatever, you know, whatever you might think it might be. As a matter of fact, it's just generally, hey, how you doing, good weather, and occasionally we'll talk about sports or the politics or something like that. Well, the other day, when it was just after New Year's, I was in the locker room and one of the other, one gentleman said to another, you know, how is, how's, how's things going? How's, you know, life? I'll be making New Year's resolutions and all that stuff. And the one gentleman who responded to him said, I just had the best year of my life. At that time in the morning, none of us are spring chickens. So we're all older. Imagine that. I just had the best year of my life. Wouldn't it be you know, great for us to be able to say that too? And what would it take for us to be able to say something like that? And again, as I was preparing for this gospel, and I read the written gospel and the message, another thing that, that occurred that I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, were well aware of was the situation that happened in that NFL game with the Bills and the injured player. It was interesting, I mean, aside from the, the, the tragedy, of course, of the whole thing and not to miss that, but the people spontaneously gathered around and prayed or took some time in silence. The crowd themselves were quiet and respectful. Donations to this player's charity he was looking for $2,500, and so far he's received $8 million. And fans of both teams came to the hospital where this player was taken to hold a vigil and to pray. People knew what to do without being told. It's in our nature. And sometimes we forget that. I mean, the issue is not football, but the issue is how we live our lives. And the fact is, is that this gospel stands in a very unusual story, but we know better. We really do. We know better, and therefore we can live better. So the gospel, why is it that Jesus gets it? He is the last person at all who needs baptism. It really doesn't apply to him. There's no need for forgiveness of sins. There's no need to incorporate him with God, the Son of God. There's no need for him to do this at all, but one. And that's the reason why this unusual exchange in that scriptural language when John the Baptist even knows it looks at me says well why are you here you should be baptizing me and Jesus said no we need to do this it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness meaning the fact that Jesus comes as the son of God and among many things but pretty much as one of the primary reasons that he comes to us is he comes to us not to say hey here is a list of things you need to do. Memorize it, get about it, and I'll come around and check your work. 
Jesus comes as a definitive message as the love of God, but he also comes to not just tell us, but he lives that way. And so while he does not need to be baptized ritually, he says, this is what we do. And it begins his ministry in a very particular way where he's going to show us by his example, his life, his words, how we should live as Christians, as people of God. He provides that example. And obviously, one of the first things that we can derive from that is we are not spectators as Christians. We are participants. And even more so, and this is the way Christianity was referred to in its very earliest times, Christianity is a way of life. It was called the way. But it's a way of life. It's not a religion per se. In the sense that, you know, you go in, you, you, you fulfill certain rights, you get your card punched, you do this, you stand here, you say that. It is not a benevolent society. It's a way of life that incorporates religious realities and religious ritual. But it doesn't begin and end when we come to church. It's not something that's broken up from the rest of our lives and separate. It's not something where, hey, I went to church and we collected, you know, food for the hungry and that was really great, but that we are living a way of life where all those things are incorporated into the fabric of our lives 24-7, 365. A way of life. And this, as we hear of the baptism of Jesus, we may be aware that there are some, and even in Episcopal churches too, when a child is baptized or an adult, they're immersed. And there's a good reason for that because it's a great symbol. Because what Jesus comes to tell us is that we are immersed into the life of God. We are in that. We are part of God's life, all of us, together. And again, it's not something we just set off and it's something we do at certain times. We're immersed into the life of God together. So Jesus starts off his ministry by showing us the way, the way of life. Very noteworthy and very important is if we look at the, what Isaiah says in that first reading, how is it that we, some of the ways we can live into this way of life. The eyes of the blind are opened. Enlightening God's word, sharing that with ourselves and with other people. How many people, and even how much blindness do we have maybe ourselves where our eyes can be open? And we can open other people's eyes by the love we share and by the word of God that we can have other people know with us, share with us. Enlightened with God's words, not ours. God's words. A bruised reed he will not break. Healing the wounds of other people. How many people are broken? How many people have been really battered about by life? It's a great image. And healing others, woundedness, is a very big part of being a Christian who proclaims and professes the love of God. And yet sometimes when we see people who are broken and who are bruised and who are battered by life, they become the subject of people that we take advantage of or will ignore. It's not what we're about. The bruised reed he will not break. Another one is that of those images is the smoldering wick. He will not quench. We think of the fragile. There was a little story they used to tell us in the seminary. And it said basically that, you know, it was a, it was a real long kind of story that uh, they, they said. But anyway, it was an image where someone was saying, I, I had faith. And it was just like a little, a little spark. And this spark of faith was, was, you know, you try to protect it from the wind and, and try to let the spark grow into a fire. 
and, and build up and really become a flame. And along came a theologian and blew it out. <laughs> Care for the fragile. What is it we say and how does that impact other people? How do we provide and help to experience stability in their lives, particularly when that stability isn't there for them, but a stability based on God? Prisoners. Prisoners are free. A lot of people are in prison. And it has nothing to do with incarceration in the court system. People are stuck in certain ways of life or are unable to help themselves or, and again, there's just so many different ways in which we can help liberate other people. Respecting people, whether it's issues of gender, age, background, whatever. Anybody who is bound and who is not free to live the life that they should be able to live, we can be agents of that freedom. And that's what that whole scenario, the whole thing that Isaiah is saying is inviting us to. And when we get part of the, when we get into the way of life of God, when we're immersed in the life of God, if we're about those kinds of things like what we see in Isaiah, then this can be the best year of our lives. Only be second to the next and the next. That's the invitation we hear today. That's the meaning of Jesus saying to fulfill all righteousness, to show us the way to live every day with each other and with all people. May this truly be the best year of our life. Until next year, may God be blessed. I invite you now to stand if you wish and let us profess our faith. We believe. Yes, <laughs> At the baptism of Jesus, God proclaims him to be his only son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church that it will always seek out the lost and provide the sacrament of baptism for them. May it nurture them with the love of Christ. Glorious God, grant to world leaders the inspiration to practice caring and respect for their people, to find peace and harmony. Glorious God, bless the work of newly elected government leaders to provide for their constituencies, communication and justice. May they govern with honesty and integrity. Glorious God, Enlighten the newly baptized Holy Spirit 
that they will remain faithful to Christ. May they reveal their faith by being true servants of the people. Glorious God, yeah. assist all parents and their faith communities to provide love and instruction to the newly baptized. Glorious God, yeah. Holy Father, you have abundantly provided for all our needs. Help us to use our wealth for the welfare of your people. Glorious God, give good health to the sick and reassure the dying of your eternal love. Glorious God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Things come of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Mm -hmm. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error, the truth, 
out of sin into righteousness, out of death, excuse me, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we are now. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Lord, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Joining us, one body of Christ with our sisters and brothers who join us virtually and are unable to receive communion in a physical form. But spiritually, we pray our prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray together our post communion prayer. Eternal God. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. As far as announcements, just to remind you that on the 29th, last Sunday of this month, we will have our annual meeting. All of you are invited and encouraged to come. We'll have one service at 9.30, and then the annual meeting will follow that. Also this month, we are updating our directory and so if you're new to St. Anne's since the last time we did a directory, which is quite a while ago, and you wish your contact information to be in that directory, we'll ask you to submit that. And then for those of you who are already in the directory, just to check that because sometimes people, their phone numbers change or addresses change or just to make sure everything is accurate. So this month we will be working on that project. Also next week, um, uh, Reverend Mariah will be here for both services, there's an eight and a 10. And I've already uh, prepared the virtual service. So for our virtual uh, worshipers, that will be uh, available next Sunday also. As far as collection envelopes, um, this is the second year in a row that we did not get them. They were ordered in October. So um, it just thank you for your patience and understanding but we don't have them to put out for you to take and to use. So uh, for now, if you could just put them in a regular envelope and uh, they'll be processed. But um, know that we're waiting on them and it's the company. Somebody called this week and asked about that. It was a good question. So I apologize for that, but that's out of our hands. Uh, any other announcements, please? I have a few announcements. Um, following the service, we'll be taking all the Christmas decorations down, reassembling them in the parish hall. Um, and this year, I'd like to keep the bows on the wreaths, if we could. Okay, uh, that's a, a change from previous years. Um, so if anybody can stay, that'd be great. Um, the fellowship team is meeting following the degreening um, in the back um, classroom. If anybody would like to join us, join the team, or just give us your input. You don't have to be a member forever if you just come and join us. Um, it's a fun group. We do lots of fun things. Um, so you're welcome to come. Um, one of the things we do is a monthly luncheon, and that's tomorrow at Madeline's at 12.30. If you haven't let me know you're coming already, I would like to do so, please just let me know. Um, Shrove Tuesday, there will be a pancake. So that's the 21st, before we know it, we'll be in the next. So um, Sally Gordon is going to organize that so anybody can help her 
What? Seven. Sorry. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> um, please, I remember to announce it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to get out there. I'm just busy. Yeah. Um, the library. First of all, Joan Fry and I would like to thank everybody who has donated to the library, either in books or monies, um, the picking books out. Um, going forward, we have CDs in the library now. So if anybody wants to take out cassettes of old radio shows, they're there. We don't have a CD player at the moment, but we will be getting one. Um, in the next couple of weeks. So if you need a player to play these cassettes, just come see Joan and myself. Also, we'd like to start a book group this month. And the book we've chosen is Five Wishes of Mr. Murray McBride. It's an awesome story. Um, we figure we'll take about a month. But sometime mid-February, we will meet. Anybody interested in discussing the book? We'll give more information uh, as we go through the month and let you know when we will meet. We're gonna to try to see if we can do Zoom as well as live so that more people can be involved. We do have four copies of this book that we've gotten. It will be back in the library. So anybody who might want a book, who doesn't wanna purchase one, you're welcome to borrow one. Um, you can get them from Amazon for about 13 and change. You can get them from Barnes and Noble for about 16 and change. Um, there's even a used book site where you can get them. So if you want that information, I can give it to you. So thanks again. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Good morning. For those of you at home, if you would like to uh, contribute to St. Anne's mission, uh, you can go on the website. Click the donations tab and I'll walk you through how to do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll have the back and free stick cards and sell the entire call after the service today. And one more thing, Father forgot to say, I just want to remind you that if you're going to use a plan for your connection, please put your name on it so we know who to write. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Any other announcements? Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord.
Thank you. 